We are starting a brand new series. Woo! Uh, do we have the, do we have the grab? Hey! Does that seem familiar to you guys? <laughs> Where are my campers at? Who went to camp this year? Who went to maybe kids camp last year and you went to kids camp and you don't know what we're talking about, but you still are a camper. So where are my campers at? Yeah. I also went to kids camp. So yeah, so we are, um, over the next few weeks, we are going to be just uh, uh, going and looking at this thing of freedom, right? Everybody say freedom. Freedom. All right, now say it like Braveheart. Okay, freedom. Freedom. Because, yeah, he was, he was, uh, was, was he Irish? No, he wasn't. Was he Irish? Celtic? Scottish. That's what it was. I knew it was something over there. It's fine. Um, it's fun to say it like that. But uh, so, yeah, we're just going to be looking at freedom and really freedom in knowing who you are. Everybody say, I do, I do. Know, who know who I am. I am. Come on. And so uh, we're just going to be looking at this thing of, of identity, and um, we're starting off with a message. This message is entitled Real Fake, all right? You guys know some people who are real fake? Yeah. Ooh. Somebody's like looking over, and they're like, oh, no, I don't want to say anything, but it might be. No, not here, okay? So um, I want you guys, who has a cell phone here? Cool. Cool. I, I want you to uh, I want you to go in, and I want you to open up either your camera, or your Snapchat, or your Instagram, or whatever. And I want you to to take a picture of somebody next to you. Don't save it, and don't post it. But I want you to find somebody next to you with a crazy filter. Exactly. You guys are like, wait a minute. Crazy filter, wild filter, insane filter. I want somebody, if you don't have a, okay, let me see, who, who thinks they have the best one? Take it, I'll give you guys a couple, couple more. Who thinks you got a good one? Who, who, who's got a good one? What is this over here? Hey, hey, baller right there, that's awesome. I love that. All right. Oh, that's something for sure. Oh, oh, who even is this? That's you? I'm, I'm using this one. Okay. What? Who is that? I don't even know who that is. Okay. That's amazing. Let me see. Oh, oh, that was just a selfie. Oof. Oof. Oh, 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 yeah, that's something. Okay. Oh, ew. crazy. What do we got? Last one, last one, last one. I see one. Oh, you found an old school one. I love that. That's amazing. All right, so, so check this out. Here, you're going to have to unlock it for me. Who is this again? That is not Gabe. Okay, so I want you guys, I'm, I'm going to just real quick, okay? Take a look, 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 take a look. Take a look. Everybody see that? Yeah, yeah, see that? There it is. Bang, bang, right? All right, buddy, get a good look at that. That is insane. He looks like Gru from the Minions, but like if he was disformed, I don't know. Um, so check it out. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so you saw that, right? Okay, phones, up, phones away. No more filters. Focus in. So you guys saw that, or if you didn't, hopefully you saw at least a little bit of it. I couldn't even believe that that was Gabe, right? Did that look like Gabe at all? Yes. Somebody's like, yes, that's how I see him normally. Um, here's the thing. I think that so much of, of, of what we do when we use social media or we use Snapchat or we do whatever is we have these, these filters, and sometimes we, we look at them and they're, they're crazy like that, like, I, I don't even know what kind of facial thing you, I, I don't understand. <laughs> but I think it's very clear and very obvious that that is not a depiction of who Gabe is, right? 
And if you think that, get your brain checked, okay? You can't just say that because it's your sibling, all right? But I think, oh, okay, so, so the other thing I was going to ask is that, you know, you think of a time or you find a photo that you were happiest in, right? That was the other thing I was going to do, but I was like, it's not as fun. And then when you get pictures like that, it's amazing. But I want you guys to think about, e even if you don't have a phone, just take a, a couple minutes to think about how you, the happiest you've ever been in your life. Maybe it was on a vacation, maybe it was, you know, doing something with your friends or hanging out or I, I don't know what that's like. But I think it's fair to say that you're not always feeling that nostalgic and that happy all of the time, right? It's pretty safe to say that, that in the same way that that picture is obviously not Gabe in his true form, however clear you might see that, <clears throat> but... I think that what's so cool is that we're more than the emotions that we have. We're more than the feelings that we feel. We're more than the pictures that we might take. And I think on a serious note, how many people, if you have social media or have seen maybe other people on social media, know that they always try to, to give a certain depiction of what you see on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Even, even if they're not like, oh man, they're, they're such liars. Maybe they're not even liars. Like, I even do this. I'm going to get real for you, with you guys for just a little bit, right? Uh, sometimes, I'm not the smartest. Okay, you guys, didn't have to, you guys didn't have to go that hard on me, okay? But, there are some times where in the same day that I post about how amazing my wife is, we get into an argument. And there are some times that I don't say the nicest things when we get in an argument. Guys, I'm just being real. Even I do that with somebody as amazing as Macy. But check this out. Spoiler alert. I don't want you to know that I argue with my wife, right? Because I can't possibly be a real person who has issues and, and is working on myself. I can't do that. So I have to post, and the only thing you're going to see if you see my Instagram is how much I love her. The, uh, the only thing, yeah, right, right, somebody said you better. The only thing that you're going to see is how much I, I love my, my wife. And that's because I do that so that, so that I can kind of portray an image of myself. How many people know somebody on social media, maybe you don't know them as well in person, but you see them all the time and you're like, man, they are so cool. No. Like, okay, so, so if you don't, I have like three or four friends of mine who I swear, I don't know how they make as much money as they do because they travel all the time. Like there's one on my feed who is in a different country, it seems like every single day. I'm like, you're 21, how do you make this money? Anyway, but I look at that and I go, man, that must be amazing. I look at what it's like to, to, to see people with, with a lot of friends or, you know, I looked at when I was in high school, it was all about like, you know, what you were doing. And, and, and Facebook used to be uh, really weird where it was like, you know, tell us what you're doing. And it would be like uh, people would, would have their names and then it would be like, is whatever. And it was like super lame to do. Like, that's what we did. We wanted everybody updated all of the time, and, and we wanted this, this filter over our life that you're only going to see the things that I want you to see, but I don't think that that's the real us. If you guys had to guess, how many people out of 100 lied on their dating profiles Hold on, hold on, hold on. About anything. It could be their height. It could be their eye color. It could be their dating history. It could be whatever. How many people lied out of 100 on their dating profiles? Who says, who says it's above 90? Okay, okay. Who says it's below 80? Okay, who says it's above 50? Okay. Let me let you guys know. It was 67. That's low. 
But let me, let me bring it down, because 67 out of 100 roughly uh, uh, breaks down to two out of three people. Two out of three people lied about their dating profile when they built it online. Whether it was their height, whether it was their, uh, their eye color, whether it was, you know, their dating, whatever the case, they, they didn't feel good enough about themselves or they didn't feel like they could let people in on what they really were. My driver's license says I'm 5'7". I tell people I'm 5'8", okay? I'm trying to get that extra. <laughs> I don't want to be short, okay? I think people sometimes often create versions of themselves that they think are better or more appealing. Have you guys ever been guilty of making yourself feel or look better or more appealing or more like, oh yeah, I'm trying to be somebody that I'm not? Maybe it was impressing a friend group, right? Maybe it's, maybe it's, maybe it's trying to be something that I know deep down I'm not. I think that sometimes people act different around different people. And I think on some level, we're all kind of guilty of it. But I think that there is a way that we can start to live more authentic, more real, more transparent lives. Okay? So there's hope for all of us, because I think we all deal with this. I think that the type of behavior that we all have is actually also seen in the Bible. In Matthew 23, you can go ahead and throw it up, Matthew 23 Verses 27 and 28, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, and Jesus did not, like, go soft on the Pharisees. He was, like, all the time, like, knuckleheads, crazies, get out of my face. He flipped tables on them and, like, cracked whips in a temple because they were selling stuff. I don't know if you guys knew that. Jesus straight up was like, watch out, I'm here, right? Anyway, this is what it says in Matthew 23. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. He says, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. You see, what Jesus was doing with the Pharisees here is he was actually calling them out and saying, hey, you're doing everything that my father has commanded you to do. You're doing all of the checklist things that you're supposed to do in your faith. But what you're not doing is the things on the inside. A modern translation or a modern kind of way of thinking about this is, hey, that's amazing. You come to church. Oh, that's, that's amazing. You come two times a week. You come on Sundays and Wednesdays. Oh, wow. So good. But if the inside, if your heart is, is broken and messed up and, and, and you have like all of these things that you're not, not only do you have them, but you're not willing to, to reconcile them or fix them or allow God to come in and change in your life. If you have those things, then it doesn't matter how many church services you come to. It doesn't matter how much you you volunteer or you decide that you're going to do. It doesn't matter if you come to camp or convention. What he's saying is, hey, the inside is still messed up. Jesus, throughout that entire chapter, go back and read it. Matthew 23. That entire chapter is about making... Uh, the point that doing things in order for them to be seen is an awful motive. I'm going to say that again. If you're taking notes, take this down. Do not do things in order to be seen. Don't do things in order so that everybody will look at you and go, oh man, he's so cool. He's so amazing. He's so great. Because then you're just going to trick yourself into thinking that you have this amazing relationship with God when on the inside everything is broken and dead. We have to live authentic lives. See, the Pharisees, they had no true love for God, no true love for the people around them, but all they wanted was the positive attention. Hello? 
How many people, if you were being honest, would say, there have been times in my life where I have sought after positive attention? Hello. Doesn't matter where I get it from. It doesn't matter where it comes from. I want the positive attention, and however I can get it, that's what I'm going to do. See, the Pharisees, they, they didn't just want to do the right thing. They wanted to be seen doing the right thing. I want to read um, in uh, John chapter 8. But there's a saying that Jesus says, and he says, if you hold to my teachings, you'll, you'll be my disciples. We'll get into it a little bit more. But, but he says this, and I think you have to understand the teaching before you understand holding to his teaching, right? We talk about this all the time. You can't start books in, um, you can't start books in the sixth chapter and not, what's, not know at least what's going on, right? If you're going to start a book in the seventh or eighth chapter, at least spark note the first five, okay? <laughs> you guys know what spark notes is? Is that still a thing? I don't know. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39 says this. It says, on the last and the greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and in a loud voice, he said this, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this, he meant the, the spirit whom those believed in him were later to receive. Up until that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. So Jesus says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, rivers of life of living waters will flow from within them. So in John chapter 8, knowing that teaching, knowing that's what he said, this is what he, Jesus goes on to say. To the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching... You are really my disciples. disciples. Then you will know the truth. Let's all, this, let's all say this together because we all know this, right? And the truth will set you free. Who has ever heard that before? The truth will set you free. I think even in non-Christian circles, people always like to use this, right? Like, I had friends, okay, like, when I was a freshman in high school, I got suspended. I think I've told that story before. I know, I know. I'll tell it again, I'm sure, some other time, but not tonight. The point is, I was friends with knuckleheads, okay? All the time. I mean, I'm not talking about, like, just crazy people. I'm talking about, like, people who were always, like, running from cops and, like, doing crazy stuff. Like, what? yeah, wild. And they would always say the same thing if they ever got caught doing something, if they ever got caught, you know, with, like, drugs or, or whatever the case may be. They would always tell me the same thing. I'm good, dog. I'm like, dude, no, you're not. Like, you're really not. And they were like, well, the truth will set me free. I'm like, no, I don't think you understand what that means. Okay. The truth is going to lock you up, dog. <laughs> Let's be real. So check this out. We like to use that, but I don't think we actually understand what it means for the truth to set us free. The truth to set us free. What is the opposite of truth? Lies. Right? And what's, what's the opposite of freedom? Starts with, starts with an S, yeah. Slavery, to be enslaved to something. So, as you guys are thinking about this, you see, you see, Jesus had been teaching these people that he was the Messiah. Jesus was teaching these people that through him and him alone was the only way to life. The only way to everlasting life. The only way to, to living water that would actually f flow from within your heart. The people that believed in him would, would have this as a part of their characteristic and who they were. He says, when he says that you know the truth and the truth will set you free, well, the only reason that anybody can know the truth is because they know who Jesus is. 
The only way for somebody to know the truth that will then set them free is if they know that Jesus is the only way to eternal life. If they know what Jesus did for them on the cross, if they know and have a relationship with him to be able to actually live this thing out. That's the only way to live in the truth that will set you free. If you hold to that, you hold fast onto the word of God and you begin to understand the magnitude of what has been done for us. You begin to understand exactly how big God is, exactly how great Jesus is. Before Jesus, there was no salvation. Everything had to be earned and, and, and there had to be sacrifices that were given and there had to be all of these things in, in what, was, what was called an atonement. We are sinful, right? We've always been sinful since Adam fell in chapter 3. Like literally, if you were to try to open up a Bible right now and just randomly try to open it up to the first page, you would probably be in like Genesis chapter 20. Like you wouldn't get how thin, it's like page 3. We've needed Jesus. We needed a Savior. So there was nothing that, that, could, that could save them outside of living lives submitted and, and living in, in with, with sacrifices and with this thing called atonement. There was no salvation. But in Jesus, we actually gain access to that. Jesus was talked about in Genesis chapter 3. I don't know if you guys knew that. Jesus was actually mentioned and, and he, he, he was kind of prophesied that it was going to be to pass, that he was going to come and save humanity. Sometimes I think that we begin to look at things that are not the truth, which are lies. And if truth leads to freedom, then lies must lead to slavery, right? I think that just like the Pharisees, I think we try to become slaves to the things that we're trying to imitate because we're pursuing lies and things that, that try to tie us up and trip us up. I think we compare ourselves to others too much. I think we even compare ourselves to ourselves too much. Let me, let me say that again. I think we compare ourselves to ourselves too much. I think that sometimes we look at ourselves and go, man, I was happier at this time. Why can't I just get back to that spot when I was this way and I was just better and I was just this? I think sometimes we, we, we suffer from comparing ourselves to ourselves. I think that we compare ourselves to celebrities and I think that that's only perpetuated by how close we can get to them now through social media. You can literally follow a celebrity now and DM them, and they probably have a publicist who runs their account, but that will come across somebody's eyes. <laughs> like We have that much access to people that we used to not have access to. So I think that that actually looks at it, where there used to be this thing of like, oh man, they're celebrities, okay, we're just not even going to mess with it. I think that now we've actually gotten closer to them, and we're looking at them, and we're going, oh man, like, I saw their Snapchat story, or I, I, I saw their Instagram story. I'm like, oh man, they, they, they just have so cool things, and they're just doing everything that I want to do. And I think that Christian culture isn't exempt, right? I think we have, cult, I think we have uh, worship leaders that we all look up to. I think we have bands and stuff that we all look up to. I think we have speakers that we look up to, that we follow, and go, man, if I could just speak like them, or if I could just lead worship like them, if I could just learn music like them, if I could just do all of this, then all we're doing is chasing these things that are superficial. They lead to lies. It's even worse when we start comparing ourselves, who we know, or we think we know, to the photoshopped, to the edited, to the filtered, to the protected view of other people. The real me is always going to look at other people who are filtered and photoshopped and edited and messed up, or, or not messed up, I'm messed up. The people who are, the people who look perfect on the outside because that's what they're showing. But I guarantee you that there are people who follow me on Instagram who think that, that I'm the perfect one. And I'm not. I 
think that we have to start breaking out of these things of comparing our real version to other people's fake versions. We have to be careful that we don't start formulating our own fake versions around other people, that we're authentic and that we're real. This cycle that we live in leads to so lower self-esteem, leads to negative emotions. There's so much that deals with these things when we have this idea that's so distorted and messed up. But the way that we can combat this, the way that we find our true identity and we start to hold on to it and we start to, to, to make sure that everything there is like, okay, I've got this, is when we hold on to Jesus. If we chase after anything else other than what Jesus has done for us and other than a relationship with him, do you hear me? I think that if you chase anything else, you're going to fall short every single time. Even if you get to where you think you need to go. If you're starting to chase something, and you're like, oh, this is awesome. This is great. I'm going to chase this thing. I'm going to run after it. And then maybe you're like, okay, this is actually fulfilling me. This is actually satisfying me. This is actually something I can see. Like, I don't need Jesus, right? I, I don't need these things. Like, I'll just start to kind of just back off a little bit. And then you get two months, six months, a year, ten years down the line, and you go, wait a minute. I've thrown away all of this time chasing after something that didn't even exist. We have to cling to the truth of what Christ has done for us that allows Christ to break some of those chains that we put ourselves in. So I think when we think about how we can stop ourselves from chasing after picture-perfect lives, lives, how we can start to pursue truth in a world that's feeding us half-truths all of the time, let me, let me give you a little tidbit, okay? Marketing is all about how to make you feel bad and how to make you feel lesser than and how to make you feel like you need the thing that they're selling you. And that's not even just, that's not even like bad products, right? There's always this thing that you need more or you need better or you need, like, like how much... I'm going to get off on a tangent. How much can you upgrade toilet paper? Like, for real. Like, I don't need the upgraded, better version of it. Like, I'm, it's, it's this. It's on a roll. I'm good. Right? Just don't give me something that's see-through. Because then, I'm no, I'm going to go through half a roll. All right, that's TMI. I'll stop. So you guys understand what I'm saying, right? You're with me, okay? But he's like, just change the subject, please. How do we keep each other on track with this stuff? Right? How do, how do we make sure that we're not feeding into the lies? I think that a lot of us would look at it, and, and most of you guys aren't on social media, which is amazing. But, like, I know the, the quick answer is, well, just get off of social media and get off, you know, the Internet. That's true, right? Right? That, that's absolutely 100% for seasons of time. That's, that's a great solution to have. And, and it might even be the permanent solution for you. Good. If you feel like you can live off the grid, more power to you. You know what I mean? But I think that we ha it goes deeper than that, right? It's not just social media. It's not just that thing that we look at and we just blame all of our problems on. I think we have to understand the deeper issue, that, that, that what we see, even, whether it's social media, whether it's at school, whether it's at different friend groups that we have, whether or not you go to like football or basketball games or, or soccer games or volleyball games and you see your friends and you think, oh man, they're just amazing. They're just so cool. I, mean, I, I know every single thing about them because I look at them from a distance and I can see everything that they're doing. I used to think that in school all the time. Like, oh man, the, the, these guys just have it made. I, I wish I could just be like them. But I think we need to take time to encourage each other to build the faith. 
to build our faith, to not be afraid to, to call people out, to not be afraid to have friends who can actually look at us and say, hey man, I'm being a little fake right now. Like, we should be real. You ever ask somebody how they're doing and they're like, oh man, I'm good. I'm chilling. You're like, how are you really doing? And their face kind of gets all real and they're like, not good. You're like, why'd you lie to me the first time? I could tell. But I think sometimes we need those people in our life who can actually hold us accountable and hold us to the truth. Say, hey man, let's do this thing. If the worship team could come up. You guys are awesome. I think we have to give ourselves grace. And I think we have to give everybody else's, uh, everybody else around us grace, right? Like, like everybody's path for growth looks a little different, right? We have to understand that. We have to look at that. We have to realize, like, okay, like I'm in this thing. Other people are in this thing. I, they're not my enemy. I know sometimes we get jealous because we see other people who are succeeding or what we think is, or, you know, what we think is success. You guys ever, uh, have you guys ever gotten, you guys ever gotten jealous because God was doing something in somebody else's life? Come on. I know I'm not the only one because I've done that. I don't think it gets any easier. I don't think it gets any easier. I don't think it's something that ever really goes away, but I think that we can learn how to fight it. We can learn how to fight it with the truth of God's word. And I think that when you begin to know God, know his character, know his, know his personality, know who he is, know his word, read your stinking Bibles, y'all, right? Like when you know who he is, when you know his word, like so many people, Hello. <laughs> that was amazing. I thought we were about to go into like some 80s retro Baywatch scene, right? No. Let's focus back. <laughs> I think that I think that we have to, to, to realize like in a world that so desperately, right? You probably have friends and maybe you're even dealing with it yourself, right? Where you're like, man, what is my purpose here? Why am I the way that I am? Why, why is, is this thing happening to me? Why am I the way that, that I am? I think we live in a culture where everybody is trying to find themselves, right? But I think that the answer to that, not that you go looking to God or you go looking for him so that you can just find the answers that you need, but I think that when you do authentically go after God, you begin to understand yourself on a deeper level. Because it's no longer you fighting to understand yourself, it's God revealing these things to you. Because he loves you, because he cares about you. And so if you develop a relationship that says, God, I just wanna do every single thing that you ask me to, I want to bring you glory in every situation. I want to bring you honor to, with, with all of the people in my life. I want to know you. I want to love you. I want to dive deep. All right. Yeah. It's just saying it. I want to go into your presence every single time that I can. I think he begins in that moment. He's faithful as we begin to do that to say, hey, let me tell you about you. Hey, let me, let me tell you about the thing that I'm calling you to. Hey, let me tell you uh, 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 about how to encourage other people. Hey, I want to work in you and I want to work through you. I think that if you begin to, to just submit yourself to God, say, I want a relationship with you. I want to know you deeper. I think that he is faithful to, to let us see ourselves deeper as well. So tonight... I want to pray a, a prayer, but before I do, it's very simple. This isn't one of those things of like, if you're dealing with this, you're dealing with this or whatever. I just want to very simply ask two questions with every head bowed and every eye closed. I don't want to walk away from this moment. I know a lot of us 
we're, we're part here, we're family here, we're ready to go. I don't want to ever leave this moment without saying if you've never had a relationship with Jesus, maybe you, maybe you think that you have, maybe you've raised your hand, maybe you've said the, 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 the prayer, but like you really didn't mean it in your heart. If you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and tonight you say, hey man, I, I want to do that that's you for the first time you're saying this is what this is the decision I want to make would you just please just be bold and raise your hand I want to I want a relationship with him I think tonight I want to also ask if you've had a relationship with him but maybe it's kind of gone stale that happens right if you got a stale relationship with God and you're starting to notice, man, I got all these issues and I just don't know what to do. I think the answer is to get into deeper relationship with God. To understand Jesus more, to understand God's word more on a deeper level. If that's you, if you say, I want to go deeper in my relationship. I want to go deeper. I want to know who God is. I want to know who I am. I want to know these things not because I'm trying to like figure stuff out, but because I just want more of God. If that's you, tonight you say, I want just more of him. Would you raise your hand? You say, I want more of him. Thank you, come on. I love that. I want to pray this prayer that was written for this, this message. But I think it's so powerful, and I think that if you would just allow this to sink into your heart man I think that it could be an encouragement as we head into a time of response it says this it says God allow me to focus on your truth allow me to focus on your plan for my life on the things that you have set in front of me Lord I ask that you show me what you are doing when I'm unsure anything is happening God, I pray that you break the focus that I have from things that don't truly matter. And then I pray that I would begin to learn the value of what you have done more than anything else in my life. We thank you for your word. We thank you that it's true. We thank you that it's good. And Lord, I pray that we would just begin to ask how can we serve you? How can we love you better? How can we get to know you on a deeper level? And I pray that you would just begin to reveal yourself to us. As you're faithful to do so when we look after you. Lord, I pray for each and every student, every household, every family that's represented, Lord. Would you allow them to, to, to know you better? And Lord, in turn, would you allow us to to be able to encourage each other and be able to walk this thing out together. No fakeness, no filters. We ask that you would just allow this word to sink deep into the hearts of your people. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name.